Hope you all like your mailbag questions answered because for today's episode, we are going to get into all of your questions that you asked me today. I believe we got about 10 to 12 to 13 questions total. So that's going to take up the bulk of the show. And we're also going to get into some of the all-star festivities that were announced today. How Cindy Crosby and Alex Ovechkin are going to be teaming up for one of the uh, things in this skills competition and just how their relationship has truly evolved uh, over the years. And we'll also touch on a little on Josh Yowie's article as how, as why, oh, why, as he wrote about Yarmir Yager today for the athletic, as their athletic top 99 list is counting down. I think Sidney Crosby is coming up very soon, but that's all coming up right after this drop. You're locked on Penguins. Your daily podcast on the Pittsburgh Penguins. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Locked On Penguins podcast. I'm, of course, your host, Hunter Hodes. Remember to follow me on Twitter at Hunter Hodes. Follow the show's Twitter at LR Store Penguins. And, of course, thank you all so much for making this your first listen of the day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. You can visit fanduel.com slash locked on today to get started. So let's get into your mailbag questions. Again, that's going to take up the bulk of today's show. We'll also touch on some of the skills competition stuff towards the end. And we'll also do a little small ode to Yarmir Yager as, you know, Josh wrote an incredible article. <clears throat> and um, speaking of Josh, if you have not taken the time to listen to our episode on Wednesday, highly recommend that you do. Josh, as always, brought a lot of great insight. And, you know, he's just a, he's just a great person to talk to about the Penguins in general. So um, I really hope you guys check that one out. So <clears throat> let's start with um, Jackson Hollister here. What are your thoughts on Adam Henrique? Would you want him as the third line center? So, <clears throat> great question, Jackson. I know, you know, you're always coming in my DMs with, you know, some cat friendly stuff with potential trades. And, you know, I really do appreciate that. Um, but for this, um, it, it, and he, he is on a bad team this season, 18 goals, 30 points in 49 games. I'm trying to find his shooting percentage here. Um, on the, on his hockey reference, uh, page, you know, it looks like it's right around where his career average with um, Corsi percentage, 48%. So that shot attempts his career, he's hovering around 50%. Again, he's playing on a bad way, not too much, but <clears throat> the fact that he does have 18 goals already in 49 games, <clears throat> does Jeff Carter have those kind of numbers as your third line center? Absolutely not. Heck, even in his last few years on the Ducks, you know, even going back to 2019, 20, when he was 29, 26 goals, 43 points in 71 games. Year after that, 45 games, had 12 goals, 21 points. Last year, 19 goals, 42 points. This past year, 18 goals, 30 points. So he is about to surpass his goal total from last year. And he only played in 58 games. You know, he's played in 49 so far. And if he stays healthy, you know, there's a chance that he may even get to 30, um, you know, by the time this season ends. I don't know about 30, but, you know, definitely 20, 25, something like that. You know, his, his goals per 60 this season, 1.2. You know, that's a little step up from 1.1 last year. His assist for 60 minutes, 0. 0.8 points per 62. Yeah, that is very, very solid on the Ducks team. Heck, his five on five points per 60 last year was 2.5. Very solid numbers on a bad Ducks team. <clears throat> I would be very interested in getting Henrique from the Ducks. I don't know how much he would cost, but I would definitely be looking towards him. I think he carries a pretty reasonable cap hit for the Penguins. You know, they have history trading with the Ducks. Obviously, they just traded for Ricard Raquel. At last year's deadline, he makes a lot of sense, in my opinion. Again, good goal scorer, good playmaker, solid defensively. I think in one way you can maybe put him on power play two if you want to, and he can replace Carter in that situation. He can also kill penalties. He's always been a pretty um, underrated player, I thought, throughout his career. Would really like to see them go after Henrik. I think he's going to carry a lot of interest. You know, he... The, the price, because the Penguins got for Raquel, but he's a top six winger. I don't think Henrik is a top six center at this point in his career. So maybe uh, you can get him for you know, your second round pick again, star player, because you're probably going to have to have money the other way. Um, you, you don't have to trade your second. You can give a third a prospect or something like that. But, you know, I don't think he's going to have to cost, you know, a first rounder. Um, or anything like that. I'm just trying to double check um, the cap friendly for the Ducks to make sure um, if he is a rental for them. Um, 
uh if he would be a rental for them and no no he he still has <clears throat> excuse me he still has two years left at eight so what well, i should say rest of the season and then next season so 5.8 would have to be sending some salary the other way to go get him <clears throat> you're not going to be fitting that under the cap when you have 20 20 thousand dollars in cap space so you know they would have to have to be i think at least one maybe two contracts in their way but definitely really interested in him sorry for the long-winded answer jackson but really really like um henrique as a player um getting to uh cam easton who you know he's come on this show before when i first started he's been one of my friends for a very long time <clears throat> really appreciate you asking this cam asks i'm seeing El elliot freeman talk about the possibility of thatcher demko to the penguins who do you think would be some potential targets that make sense for them? And what does this say about Charlie's future with the team? Again, great question, Cam. <clears throat> I touched on this on my Tuesday episode. I really don't think, you know, it's, I don't, you know, Josh Joey also touched on this on Wednesday. I don't see them going for Demko. Um, I think if they're, and if anything, if they go for Demko, it's probably after the summer. I think I don't see them going for Demko at least this season. I think maybe that's a summer move you could do. Um, you know, in terms of Jari's future with the team, I do think, and I'm under the assumption that they want to extend him. Ron Hextall is not usually one to engage in contract discussions during the season. I know he did with Jeff Carter, very bad move. But other than that, I really haven't seen him sign too many other players to extensions during a season. I think he is the number one priority because when you do look at the goalie market next season, it's rough. You know, I, I believe Frederick Anderson is the top, one of the top free agents. After that though, it's it's not good. So I do think he is the priority um, <clears throat> to be extended. But, you know, I still want to see him stay healthy for the rest of the season. I want to see how he does in the playoffs so the Penguins get in. Um, I don't think it says too much about his future of the team. But, you know, if they were to somehow get Demko, I think it would, you know, show to him that, you know, they don't trust his health. So, again, I don't truly know if they're in it. I know Freeman touched on it in his blog and on the podcast with Jeff Merrick. But he also could just be spitballing with that. And then, <clears throat> again, you know, some potential targets, Cam. You know, Nick Schmaltz, Max Domi, Jackson pointing out Adam Henrique. Um, I think someone has another question about Barbanov. He makes sense from the Sharks. Um, uh, my buddy was texting me about Jacob Chikrin, how that could make sense for the Penguins because Ryan Dumont's contract is coming off the books. Chikrin would make a lot of sense just because they could use more help defensively. But I just don't think the Penguins have the assets that Arizona would want in that trade. But, you know, those are just a few names, Cam. That I'm really spitballing for you. Um, Ivan Barbashev, I know Josh Yoey mis mistaked him for Pavel Buchnevich on Wednesday show. Um, I didn't catch it the first time, which is kind of funny. But, <coughs> excuse me, you know, those are some of the players that I'm really looking at in terms of the deadline coming up. You know, you can put Jonathan Taves in there if you want, but he also, 10.5 million. I don't know if you're going to be able to get that. Vladimir Tarasenko, Ryan O'Reilly, you know, or, or someone else that maybe Ron Hextall is going after that we don't know about. Heck, we didn't even know that he was going after Ricard Raquel um, last season. And then <clears throat> last one before the break. I have always loved, this comes from Logan uh, uh, Krinky. I, I apologize if I mispronounce your last name. Again, you know, I, I, I'm bad with last names sometimes. I know my last name is hard to pronounce. So I apologize if I did mispronounce it. Logan asks, I've always loved Tyler Bertuzzi and his energy on the floor track. He kind of reminds me of a young Jason Zucker in many ways. What do you think it would cost us to pry him away from Detroit? Great question. I think Tyler Tyler Bertuzzi is very, very interesting to me. As I pull up his hockey reference page here, because I don't have his stats in front of me because I am a absolute bozo. So he's been in the league since 2017. He's only played in 17 games this season, one goal, five assists during that time. But, you know, <clears throat> he's also been pretty, <clears throat> he's been banged up. The last season, though, we all saw how good of a player he was. 30 goals, 62 points in 68 games, right around a point per game. Before that in 2020, 21 goals, 48 points. And then before that, 21 goals, 47 points during 2018-19. Um, you know, I, I think he would make sense. He is a left wing, so you can put him on the second or third line. Um, his current salary is 5.2, but his cap hit is 4.7. So he's even more affordable, <clears throat> it's funny, than Henrique is. That's the funny thing there. It's just, you know, do they need a left wing more than they need a center? That's what I'm really looking for. I think, you know, it would allow the Penguins to have options for that third line. Maybe Brian Rust gets jumped down, uh, gets dropped down. Maybe Jason Zucker gets dropped down. But I would also feel bad for Zucker because he's been one of their best consistent wingers this season. You know, I think, if anything, he's been honestly a little more consistent than Rust and Gensel have been this year, which is weird to say because Jake is usually their most consistent winger year in and year out. But I would say right now that that honor belongs to Jason. 
Um, <clears throat> you know, you can put him with Crosby if you want, but I, I think they're a bit hesitant to separate Gensel and Crosby. Um, you know, any of those top three lines work. It would make them deeper, obviously, but I also think, Logan, you're still not solving that third line center issue. I don't really think, someone can correct me if I'm wrong, don't think he's played a lot of center during his NHL career. He's mainly just been a winger. Um, so I think you would still have to go out and get a center in that scenario, but I definitely do like him as a winger for this team. You know, Detroit is probably going to be sellers at this year's deadline. You know, as I look at the standings right now, I do understand, yes, the Penguins blew a 4 nothing lead to them about a month ago, but right now the Red Wings, seven points behind the Penguins for that final playoff spot. Um, I know the Red Wings even have a game in hand on them, but still, um, you know, they are probably not going to make the playoffs. There's probably going to be a little bit of a fire sale there. They're really not in the race right now. So, <clears throat> Bertuzzi could be an option for some teams, including the Penguins. And, you know, that would be really interesting to see if they could um, pry him out of there. So that's my long-winded answer on that. Um, that wraps up this first segment of mailbag questions. Coming up in the second segment, we got more mailbag questions for you all. Um, <clears throat> as, <clears throat> as, as you know, I, again, I really appreciate all of you sending these in. All right, before we get to our second segment this year the only app you need at your super bowl party is FanDuel, the america's number one sports book we're really excited about our new sports betting partner for locked on because they're the number one sports book in america FanDuel, and if you are new to FanDuel, that's even better they have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and super super easy you can download FanDuel right now so you can bet super bowl 57 with a no sweat first bet you'll get up to three thousand dollars back in bonus bets if your first bet does not win the app also lets you bet on everything from the money line to point spreads to who will score a touchdown. <laughs> Again, I keep saying this all week. Jalen Hurts, anytime touchdown pass. It, well, I don't, I don't think that's a, that's a bet. Just screwed up. Jalen um, Hurts, anytime touchdown. Jeez, um, I, I just screwed that up again. Miles Sanders, anytime touchdown because I think he's going to have a big game. Jalen Hurts, if there's a prop to have, maybe have two plus touchdowns, I would take the over with that. I think he's going to do really well against the Chiefs defense. And I also like the Chiefs, um, the, the Eagles money line in this one. It's all on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Best of all, you can get paid your winnings instantly. So join FanDuel today at FanDuel.com slash locked on to get your no sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the NFL and locked on. All right, I'm back here in this episode of the Locked On Penguins podcast. I am your host, Hunter Hodes. Remember, follow me on Twitter at Hunter Hodes. Follow the show's Twitter at Eleanor Store Penguins. And of course, thank you all so much for making this your first listen of the day. <clears throat> so, next question, Tyler Campo asks, how do you think management will clear cap space to be able to make a move at the deadline? Who might get dealt to clear some money? Great question there as well, Tyler. Really appreciate you asking that. Um, you know, it is no secret the Penguins barely have any cap salary cap space right now. If they do make a move, it's probably going to be someone going out the other way, like you saw last year with Thomas Simone and Zach Aston Reese. But for this year's one, you know, I, I'm kind of keeping my eye on Teddy Bluger. I don't really think he's in press management for the last calendar year. I mean, I, I was told point blank that he was in that original Jeff Petrie trade, but they didn't want to take Pedersen. They wanted Matheson, and, and the Penguins are pretty lucky when it comes to that. Matt Matheson's a very good player. Don't get me wrong, but, you know, where would this defense be right now um, <clears throat> if they traded Pedersen? I think that would have been really bad. But, you know, I look at someone like Teddy Bluger. He could be – I know he doesn't make too much money, but I do think he's someone that could be cleared. You know, maybe Kasperi Kappen if they want to get him a fresh start. I know they just extended him. I know Mike Sullivan has, is very close with him and likes – you know, he keeps saying, like, I got to be a better coach for him and all that stuff. But I do think he could be on the radar. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's tough, Tyler, because – no one from that top six is going to go anywhere, right? Doubtful. You know, maybe Brock McGinn, but I think Ron Hex, because Ron Hexall just signed him and he's in the second year of his deal. Maybe not. It's tough. You know, does Dan Heinen go back the other way because he struggled this season? Great question. You know, I, I don't have a full answer. Those are names I'm just spitballing to you and all the listeners that could be going the other way. Defensively, you know, in a perfect world, Brian Dumoulin, but I think the coaching staff just likes him a lot, and so does the management. I know he's probably not going to come back, but I, I, I think he would. The chances of him getting traded are a lot lower than him getting resigned. I think that's that's how I see it, and, and I think both the chances for both are pretty low. So um, that's who I'm thinking. Those are some of the players right now that I'm thinking that could be moved out, Tyler, um, in terms of a potential move by the deadline. But maybe Hextall surprises us and puts someone else in there. Um, 
This is from Fry Time. This is a good question. If Jim Rutherford were the GM with this team to start the year, would they be better or worse, assuming he'd have made moves already? Wow. Um, <clears throat> another very solid question. It's tough because I think he probably would have made one to two moves by now. I don't think it, I don't even think it would be one. I think it'd be two. You know, for God's sakes, this guy traded Carl Haglin during a what a November slump. November, December slump when he said, yeah, I didn't like what I was seeing. I wanted to change up the room. I understand it probably pissed off a lot of people in the locker room. And I think, I think I read from multiple, um, you know, sources that were covering the team that were saying like, oh yeah, you know, the, the players are really shaking up about it. You know, Patrick Hornquist, I think cried for a while from what I remember. Um, you know, remember the Penguins tried to reacquire him at the deadline, but couldn't because they were retaining salary. <laughs> I'll never get over that. Um, but, you know, I think... It's a tough question to answer because I think the team would be different right now under Jim. But if this was the team under Jim, say that, I think right now the team would be a bit better because I think he probably would have made a move um, or two. Yeah, um, I think he would have traded out someone that he signed a couple years ago, like say Brock McGinn. You know, he's never been afraid to move on from his mistakes. Remember, he signed Ryan Reeves, didn't even last a full season in Pittsburgh before he left. I think Brock McGinn could have definitely been traded by now. Someone like Danton Heinen, maybe even Brian Dumoulin, even though he's been through hell and back here with the Penguins. Um, I think he could he probably could have traded a lot of players by now because, you know, that's just who he is as general manager. So, you know, I, I, I assume in that scenario that they would have made a couple of moves. Um, I do think they probably would be a bit better because I don't think he would be as passive as Hexall has been. That's how I see it. Um, this comes from um, JC. Even though most people look at him in a bad way, if and when Hextall makes a trade, are you confident that it will be a good trade given that most of his more recent trades have been good? Um, that's the first question. Good question. I appreciate you asking. You know, I will say this about Ron Hextall. I am not someone who is a big fan of what he's done <clears throat> for the most part. I think if I were grading him right now, I'd give him a C minus being generous just because that, that, that's not great because he brought the core and Ricard Raquel and Ryan Ross back. But, you know, in the last couple of deadlines, he's been good. That original Jeff Carter trade was awesome. Outstanding. He just kept on to him. He just, you know, kept him too long. Last year, everyone was saying, oh, Ron Hexall's not going to do anything. Goes out and makes a really good trade for Raquel. Brings him back at a, at a nice deal. My kudos. I will give him kudos to that. So those do those two deals make me confident that he can get something done. It's just the rest of this body of work outside of bringing back the core is so meh that I'm just you know at the same time you know I'm skeptical about what he can do as well. If that answers your question, so I'm definitely a little more confident just based on at least going into the deadline because he has made good deadline moves over the last couple of seasons, but. You no, know, I'm also someone who thinks that, you know, he's also made a lot of very bad moves. So I, I'm just not really sure what to fully expect. And then you also asked, do you think the reason Russ is mostly with um, line one is because Crosby refers him over Raquel? Funny you ask that. <clears throat> I have heard from a couple of people <clears throat> that are closer to the team than I am that Crosby loves playing with Rust. Take with that how you will. I have heard that. I think that is a main reason why he has been with Russ for a lot of the season. He just likes playing with him. It's no disrespect to Raquel. I know he likes playing with Ricard, but I have just heard that, you know, in a perfect world, he would rather play with Gensel and Russ. And that's what you've been seeing for a lot of you know, the last handful of weeks now. So um, that to answer your question, yes. Um, and then R. Ravine, Cody S. Three names that make a lot of sense money-wise to me. Max Comtois, Nico Stern, Tanner Janot. What are your thoughts on these players? So Comtois, you know, it, it's funny you asked me that question. This season, five goals, nine points in 39 games. You know, left winger, but I think can also play all around the lineup. You know, he's also a player that, you know, in 2020, 2021, 2021, 16 goals, 33 points in 55 games. So he has had a good year. But outside of that, a lot of very men results, Cody. You know, his other career high in goals, <clears throat> is six. Um, he also shot, um, he shot 17% that season, which is basically almost a career high for him. Um, his career stream percentage is 13. So not too much higher, but outside of that high year, last couple of years, 8.3 stream percentage, 9.4 stream percentage. So regression was always going to happen. You know, I just don't see enough pr uh, production there, at least for me, 
but I can understand why people like him. You know, he's very young, 24 years old, playing on a bad team. You can maybe stick him down to the bottom six. Um, you know, he'd be outscoring most players down there, including Danton Heinen, even Josh Archibald, but that's also an outlier because Archibald has been hurt for most of the season. You know, <clears throat> he'd be outscoring Jeff Carter. So he would be an upgrade in a couple of areas, but, you know, I'm just not really sure that he really um, moves m- moves the needle, I guess, in terms um, <clears throat> of Janot from the National Predators. This season, you know, he's playing on a team that, you know, <clears throat> not that good. The Predators have kind of fallen off. Five goals, 13 points in 48 games. Has um, He actually scored in his last two games um, for the Predators. I mean, I'm getting a text from my buddy here. Uh, I thought he was talking to me about a trade. No, I forgot that we're just on the All-Star break. He's 25 years old. Another pretty young player last season, 24 goals, 41 points, <clears throat> but, you know, also shot 19% last season. He's shooting 6.3%. I think the regression came a little too hard for him. I think that's going to come back up. But, you know, also someone that would make sense. He's a pure left winger, but I think can play over the lineup as well. You know, I would be potentially be down to take a flyer on him, Cody. But again, you know, would you put him at center? Would you put him at left wing? He'd probably be able to outscore most of the players down in the bottom six. But, you know, just, you know, how much are you relying on, you know, can he get close to repeating that production? with the Penguins, even though the Penguins don't have that good of a bottom six. Nico Sturm, another interesting one. I haven't done too much research on him, but I know he's always been um, a decent bottom six player. I can just, you know, look up how he's been this season on Hockey Reference here. You know, obviously plays for the San Jose Sharks. 11 goals, 17 points in 43 games, 27 years old. Um, You know, he's actually having a pretty decent year uh, this season, shooting 15%. That's honestly... Just a little above his career average, but he's doing all that on a bad Sharks team. I would be down to look look into that. He's a center, so he can replace Jeff Carter a lot younger than Carter. Has double digit goals. Again, his shooting percentage isn't that bad. You know, I would be down for that for sure. I, th- I think that one does uh, make sense, at least if you're asking me. Um, just a couple more to fly through here um, <clears throat> from the Black. Who would you rather have from Wilkesbury for your third line right now, Alex Nylander or Valtteri Pustin? Um. <laughs> Great question. I'd probably go Valtteri Pustinen because, you know, some people are pretty high on Nylander, and I get it. Um, <clears throat> you know, has the name, obviously, and he's played well down Wilkesbury. But, you know, I think Pustinen just has more to offer. Um, I think he has a better shot. I think he's better defensively. You know, I think he's, he's a better skater than Nylander is. I think I would rather have him up, up right now than Nylander. There's no slouch to Nylander because he has had a good year in Wilkesbury, but I think I would rather say Pustinen. Um, from King Clarky here. For real though, do you see a world where the Penguins end up as sellers pending UFAs like Zucker and Bluger can likely get you some sort of return? Honestly, Clark, right now I'm going to say no, but if they do flatten out in February, there's we'll, we'll come and rediscuss that because I do think there's a small part of me that does think um, they could be sellers if they because that February schedule is pretty nasty, man. Definitely could think that um, that's that you know that could be they could sell a little bit if Hexel doesn't think they're a cup contender. Um, and then Laura asks, why is, is Iceberg not at the All-Star game with the other mascots? Laura, I appreciate the question. I, I really don't know. You know, maybe you know, he's taking a he's taking a nice vacation, be going down to Antarctica or something. But no, oh, I have not heard anything on that. But <clears throat> really appreciate you asking. And then finally, from Alan T. Yoder here, I got two for you. I'm getting a Latang jersey. I'm getting both. But should I get on a Winter Classic jersey or Reverse Retro? Oh, Reverse Retro every time. Uh, I like the Winter Classic jerseys, but I'm doing Reverse Retro. Every single time, if you're asking me, man. And finally, what's your favorite alternate uniform the Penguins have ever worn? Wow. Whew. That's a great question. Um, Man, I... Man, that's, that's tough. That is tough. I'm going to probably ruffle a lot of feathers here. I hate the blue jerseys. Can't stand them. Never liked them. They bring back bad vibes from the, the, two, the 2010s with the concussions and all that. Hate them. Absolutely can't stand them. The best one, though, is probably, I'm going to go the the new Pittsburgh Diagonal. Oh, just amazing. Now, or I would even go the, the black Robo Penguin jersey. Ooh, that, that, that thing is, that's tight, man. I, I love both those jerseys. It's probably a tie between both of those jerseys, you know. I don't think they, you know, they truly wore both of these, you know, as, you know, their total home jersey. They wore the one this year as their alternate. And then the black Robo Penguin, but you know, man, that jersey is good. Both of them were awesome, but 
Um, really appreciate all of you um, asking me these questions. Um, we'll have to definitely do another one of these sometime. Coming up with the final segment, we're going to get into some of the all-star festivities and look at Josh Yowie's article when it comes to Yarmir Yager. But before we get into that, if you're looking for a delicious treat but don't want all the fat and calories, then you've got to try a Bilt Bar. We just got through the holidays. I know my goal is to eat a little healthier this year. If you're like me where you want to eat healthier but don't want to compromise taste, then man, I've got the thing for you. You got to try Built with Built Healthy. It's actually tasty. Seriously, they're very delicious and you won't think they're good for you. They're perfect for your New Year's resolution. And what makes them so good? Well, for starters, they're all covered in 100% real chocolate. And that's right, real chocolate. And also, you don't need to wait around to get a box. For years, we've been talking about ordering your Built Bars at Built.com, but you can actually go get them right now at your local Walmart or Sam's Club. That's right. You can head to Walmart right now, walk to the pharmacy, grab yourself a box of Built Bars, do the same thing at Sam's Club, brownie batter and churro, cookies and cream, double chocolate, all of those amazing flavors at both stores. You can thank me later on those. All right. I'm back here in this episode of the Locked On Penguins podcast. I am your host, Hunter Hodes. Remember to follow me on Twitter at Hunter Hodes. Follow the show's Twitter at Emerald Show Penguins. And of course, thank you all so much for making this your first listen of the day. So <clears throat> the All-Star festivities were announced today. And for fastest skater, it's going to be Kirill Kaprizov, Dylan Larkin, Kel McCarr, Chandler Stevenson, and Andrei Svechnikov. Breakaway challenge, Roberto Luongo is the goalie. It'll be Mitch Marner, uh, David Pasternak, Matthew Kachuk, and Ovechkin and Crosby teaming up, <clears throat> which is going to be amazing. The tending tandem, all goalies plus five women's players. Um, then we got the splash shot. Crosby, Nathan McKinnon, Miko Ranson, and Kel McCarr, Igor Shesterkin, Adam Fox, and both Pachocks. Those will be the ones um, teaming up, it looks like, for that. And then um, for the breakaway challenge, for the women that will be there, Alex Carpenter, Hillary Knight, Emily Clark, Rebecca Johnson, Sarah Nurse, content creators, um, Nasher, Nick the Goalie, Pavel Barber, Pete, Lan um, Pete Lannis, Kate Van Gate will also be there, Coach Jeremy. Some of these people, I have no idea who they are. Um, to be honest, I know who Nasher is. Uh, he's always on Hockey Twitter. So I'm pretty sure he's a YouTuber. I'm um, really excited to see Alex Ovechkin and Sid, Sid team up. Loved uh, Ovi's answer today when he was asked about his friendship with Sid over the years. He's even said, you know, start off a little rocky. I don't think we really liked each other that much, but he said they were able to mature. And, you know, he said every time one of them has a milestones, they send each other a text saying congratulations. Um, he even said lately, he goes, I know Sid's had a couple milestones come up where he's hit, even hit top 15 points all time. He said for that, I sent him a text. You know, he said, you know, we're pretty good friends now. And, you know, it'd be really cool to see them team up for this. It's It's been great to see them really, you know, just grow into, you know, not just great players on the ice, but just ambassadors for the game off the ice and see them, you know, it's a, it's a rivalry in quotation marks on the ice, but, you know, they are genuinely friends. And, you know, it's really cool to see that two of the greatest players of this generation. And then also Josh Joey's article on The Athletic today, number five in terms of the top 99 players for the from The Athletic's version, Yarmir Yager, I will always love how he tells this story about how Yager saved the Penguins back in 1999. Heck, I was only one and a half years old at the time, so I don't even remember watching that game. But, you know, <clears throat> my mom always tell my mom's always told me where she was with me when she was watching that and how she just went crazy because, you know, she knew that there was a chance they could have moved there. You know, Howard Baldwin, you know, didn't have the money to pay the players at that time, um, very close to bankruptcy. And that was also the time when Mary Lemieux was gathering up investors to, you know, make a bid to buy the team. And thankfully he was able to do that, but had the Penguins not won that series against the Devils and Joshua put this in his article, they got six extra million dollars in revenue, which is massive. Had that not happened, then, you know, the Penguins may not even be in Pittsburgh today. That's just, you know, always remember, I know there are a lot of people out there that booed Yager, but always remember, had they not won that series against the Devils, there's a good chance they may not be here. What a, what a player. What a human being. He he wants the Penguins to come to Prague for an exhibition match or regular season match so he can drop the puck in the middle of the ice, announce his retirement, sign a one-day contract with the Penguins, and then come back to do a ceremony. Apparently, Josh Yowie also reported that they've asked him numerous times this year, hey, can you come back in February or April for one of our home games? We would love to retire your number. He said right now he's just not ready yet. He's the general manager. I think he's just he's the owner of a team in the Czech Republic right now, still kind of playing a little bit. He's just biding his time. That That's who Yager is. And all I know is I'm going to be there when that jersey gets retired. I am so freaking ready for that. He is going to get a standing ovation unlike he's ever, never, unlike he's ever seen before in this city. I think there's going to be a lot of tears in people's eyes just because of how many 
you know, <clears throat> people before my generation of fans, because you know, I I do the show, I'm 25 years old, I'll be 26 later this year. You know, <clears throat> I remember nothing from that era of Penguins hockey. I was born and raised during the Gen X years, and then obviously the, the Sydney Crosby Goody Malkin core. I've gone back and watched so many of the games on YouTube on the early 90s and late 80s and you know, late 90s and stuff and early 2000s. And all I gotta say is I'm jealous of all of you that got to watch that. Just I wish I was alive to see that, all that stuff, man. And then see this. I, I would feel even more spoiled than I already am <clears throat> today. But, you know, it's going to be an amazing ceremony. I think it's going to bring him to tears. And it's going to happen sooner rather than later. His, I know the Penguins don't retire a lot of jerseys. Mario's up there. Uh, Michel Briere is the other one that's retired up there. Um, their first great player before Mario came around. But Yager is going to join them very soon. And that's going to be a very special night. And I'm really looking, looking forward to it. I'm glad he got his flowers today from Josh as a top five player to ever live. I, I would have him right now, probably at five or six, if you ask me. I think Ovechkin's probably going to take that spot by the time his career is over. But right now, he's at least a top seven, seven player to ever play. And, you know, someone that should be loved by everyone in this city. I'll say that. But that does it for this episode of Lockdown Penguins Podcast. Really appreciate all of you listening. I'll, obviously, I love seeing. Nathan McKinnon and Sidney Crosby doing their thing um, during the, the All-Star Media Day today. They're, they're best friends, and they're going to be pr- probably three sheets to the win. The, the All-Star Festivities on Friday, that is the skills competition. So <clears throat> really looking forward to watching that <clears throat> as well. So again, thank you all so much for listening. I'll have another episode for you all on Friday before more episodes next week, and the Penguins will be back on Monday. We'll be previewing the game against Colorado, and then we'll be recapping that game Tuesday and Wednesday. So, so again, thank you all so much for listening. I'll be back with another episode for you all on Friday.